Hey people of the internet, today's video is going to be on Ebola, in case you haven't heard enough about it already. But, disclaimer, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a different view on it than most of the media coverage. So let's hop right in. What do we know so far? Where do we stand? As of this filming, uh, 4,000 people have died from Ebola worldwide. And that's definitely an underestimate. Mostly in West African countries like Guinea, Sierra Leone, and Liberia. Also, we've had our first death from Ebola on U.S. soil. Health workers have been hit harder than most because of the method of transmission, which is bodily fluids. The virus is named after a river somewhat close to the original site where the virus was found. Ebola is deadly and incredibly infectious, but not highly contagious. This basically means that a very small amount can get you sick. But it is much harder for that to happen because of the bodily fluid thing than, say, influenza, which kills a quarter of a million people every year and is spread through the air. Now, in general, the United States and Europe have done a lot to combat the Ebola outbreak. Uh, we've sent troops, we've pledged money, and the CDC is actually one of the leading institutions fighting Ebola worldwide. But we've also contributed our share of problems. I want to take a look at those problems today. First, there's the incredible scare tactics going on in the media right now. Like I mentioned earlier, the flu is a much bigger risk for Western countries. Though it's not nearly as deadly, it's much more prevalent and easier to spread. In fact, Ebola is most dangerous in places of extreme poverty and low health infrastructure. So what I'm not saying here is that we should forget about Ebola, or forget about the victims, or forget about our attempts to give aid to those victims. This is an undeniably awful human tragedy. But I do want us, and this is part of the reason for making this video, to double check our responses and to think critically instead of acting instinctually. Okay, so one, media scare tactics that are preventing us from acting rationally and with the most efficiency. A second problem us non-West Africans have added, though, is the attempts to quarantine those West African countries. Many airlines have canceled their flights to those countries, and a few studies have shown that most Americans believe that this is the right thing to do. But the problem with that is this. Quarantines work for individual people, but they do not work for countries. Fathers and mothers and children in Liberia or Sierra Leone are going to find their way into other countries. That just can't be helped. And by closing down the lanes of traffic between victims and those attempting to give aid, those airlines are assuring that West Africans are going to suffer longer than they need to. A few airlines have stood their ground, delivering much needed aid to West Africa. But despite both of those things, the most problematic thing that I've seen in the Ebola outbreak is much bigger than any of this. It comes down to the way we picture ourselves and the way we picture others. It comes down to the way we picture or imagine West African countries and West African citizens. Yes, the flu is probably a bigger risk for us than Ebola. But we talk about Ebola because A, it's vivid, and B, it's non-us. Diseases or viruses from Africa carry a special, exotic ring in Western media. And yes, we ought to keep the lanes of travel open between countries. But we don't because we look at those countries as uncivilized, as barbarian, as other. And so we separate ourselves and draw distinctions. It's been the scariest part of the last two weeks. Not Ebola, but the way we talk about Ebola, and the way we talk about people with Ebola, and the way we talk about countries that have Ebola. There's been a lot of talk the last few weeks about these people as backward, or irrational, or animal, or unhuman. That talk has been so prevalent that the American people have felt that we're called to leave them to their own devices. And Ebola that comes from those uncivilized places becomes an uncivilized virus when we talk about it that way. And it scares us with its otherness. Okay, deep breaths, take a step back. Now this is incredibly frustrating and depressing, but there are people and organizations out there who are trying to help and trying to fix this, and I encourage you all to check them out. I'll leave you with the quote that has been resurfacing in my head over the last few weeks. I am a human being. Nothing human can be alien to me. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.